the 12th chapter. <laughs> Begin with verse number, hallelujah, verse number one. And it reads as follows. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. You may be seated in the presence of God. I'd like to talk about being in position to receive the promise. Being in the position to receive the promise. <laughs> Genesis uh, is the first book of the Old Testament, and we know that. And it is a collection of the early Israelites who's given information concerning the origin of things. And in this book of Genesis, you'll find that it is divided into two parts, this book of Genesis. Uh, in the first part, it gives us the history of early mankind. Uh, narrating the events of the creation and of the things of the world and of man. It gives us the account of the fall of man as well as the flood and dispersion that's found in the book of Genesis. In the second part, it gives us the account of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and of Joseph. Now when we speak of being in position for the promise, what that really means is being in position to receive your blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, in the first through the third verses of this chapter 12, God tells Abraham, whose name at the time was Abram, uh, to get thee out of thy country, from thy father's house, into a land where I will show thee. Yeah. Now, God had to move Abraham, for he wasn't in the right position for the promise in which he was able to he was going to be blessed with, that God had for him. Now, so being in a position for the promises in the beginning, in a position to be blessed. Now, but before we look at being blessed uh, for being in the position, I believe that we might all remember that you can also be in position to be cursed. The opposite of being blessed. Uh, if you read the second chapter of Genesis, around the 16th and 17th verses of Hebrews, you'll find where God warned Adam of the curse of death. And Adam told Eve, women in the Gishio, this, this these verse says, And the Lord God commanded the man, <coughs> saying, Of the tree of the garden, thou may freely eat uh, every tree. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest the other, thou shalt surely die. Die. Now, out of all the food that was in the garden, God had provided for them in the garden of Eden that it was available to them to eat. Adam and Eve put themselves in a position to be cursed. Had they not been in that position, they would not have been in the sin. Right? But because of their position and the act that they committed for being what they were, uh, the curse of death was placed upon all mankind. Yeah. Now there's a couple of things that in, in the text that teaches us uh, in this account of Abraham. Uh, one is commitment and it shows us the faith that Abraham had in God. First, he was obedient to the word of God. Look, look at the position Abraham was in before the Lord spoke to him. Now Abraham, uh, according to the Bible, 13th chapter, first verse, that you know that Abraham was a very, very rich man. Now, now already rich. But in the 16th verse of the 12th chapter, it tells us of his riches. It says that he had sheep and oxen. He had he asses. 
and man servants. He had man, maid servants. He had she asses. He had camels. Come on. He was a very rich man. And according to the second verse of the 13th chapter, uh, he had silver and gold. Rich in cattle. And in this day and time, they would say he had it going on. But you find, but, but you find that Abraham did not put his hope in treasures, in stuff, and in things. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because he knew where his blessings came from. Now, I ain't talking about nobody, I'm just going to say this. Sometimes because folks have good jobs and nice homes and cars, they feel that they have all that they need. They'll work six or seven days a week trying to keep it. And they'll make excuses to stay at home on Sunday. So that they can treasure what they think they have. Rather than come to church and give God a portion of what they have been blessed with. Uh, and give a portion back to God who's responsible for their blessings. Now, this is why so many people are not being blessed as they could be. Now, God knows that, it, uh, that everybody can handle blessings, especially material blessings. Now, this is reason, for this reason, uh, they are not faithful enough to God in the spirit of things to be able to handle sometimes the blessing God gives us in the material things. But because they have been blessed with a little something, when God truly want to bless them, that's why everything they do, they can to stay where they are. Yeah. Try not to, to, to go where God want to move them in life. Mm -hmm. And they miss out on their true blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Abraham realized that there's more to life than things. Although he was rich, he knew that there was something more precious than the silver and gold in the houses and land that he owned. So, first of all, we see that Abraham was obedient to the word of God. Yeah. This is the first step of being blessed to people by being obedient. The second thing we need to see that God has to sometimes move us out of our position uh, and separate us from some folk in our lives and, 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 and in the process of blessing us. See, so sometimes it's our own loved ones that God has to separate us from. What, watch the tape. Abraham had two brothers, by the name of Nahar and Haran. And now Haran, who was the father of Lot, who died uh, while the family still lived in a place called Ur down in, in the, in the Cadiz. And so Abraham took Lot, his nephew, and, and, and Lot went with him. Yeah. And, 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 and they had a, a father son relationship, although Lot was Abraham's nephew. Right. They, 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 they both had a great number of cattle. And in their transition to the place where God had chosen for Abraham, Abraham's herdsmen and Lot's herdsmen began to quarrel between themselves. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible said one day Abraham went to Lot and said, Lot, listen, uh, we're brothers. Let's not quarrel between ourselves. I'll tell you what you do. Uh, uh, he said, the whole land is before us. Right. Yeah, and, and Abraham said, if I want to take the land on the left, I'll take the land on the right. Uh -huh. If you want the land on the right, I'll take the land on the left. Because he said that the plain of Jordan is all before us. So a lot of Jordan east, the Bible says, and they separated themselves Come from on. one another. Right. So sometimes a person can be so close to someone that they're willing to miss out on their blessings but somebody else's. That's right. Come on. They don't even realize that the person that they're so in love with sometimes might be the reason that they're not being blessed. As God might bless them. See, God knows what we need more than we do for ourselves. Not only is there some folk that God wants to separate us from, but there are some things and some habits that folk need to be separated from in order to be blessed. Some folk have to lose the things that they have 
in order to be blessed. Yeah. When they lose that big bank account and that good job, a nice car, the houses, and everything. Uh, the thing that some folks think that they're the reason they have for what they do in life, why they, where they are in life. So they, they take it for granted that it's all about them that they're in the best. But when all the stuff is gone, when they're down as low as they can go, then they look up to God for guidance. The one whom they neglected when they thought it was all about them. They would have been blessed of themselves. But there are those who have these habits. And they have been deceived by Satan to believe that it's all right. They can bear okay if they're not hooked. But when they, when they do realize that, but when do they realize that if you can't stop, you are hooked? Yeah. <laughs> They'll say, I can stop if I want to. But they need to understand that taking a break and starting back is not stopping. That's right. All you're doing is pausing. Right. God will to bless you, but you need to be moved to another position, right. another place in your life. Right. Now, how can you stop the habit you have when you're still going to the place where you started? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be tight. Right? <laughs> That's like. He said, I'm going to start eating waffles from Burger King. <laughs> and I keep on going to Burger King and watching the folk eat waffles. <laughs> Sooner or later, if you're careful, you might buy the waffle again yourself. <laughs> so there are times we need to separate ourselves. And sometimes God has to take us out of our comfort zone that we might be blessed. Sometimes he has to separate us from people and things that we might be blessed. But in spite, of, in spite of that, we see here in the text that God always keeps his promise. We as a people sometimes have the tendency to say things that we don't make good on all the time. But we've been known to say whatever it takes to get whatever we want. Uh, to do whatever it takes to get whatever we want. But thank you to God. That, that, that God is not like man. Yeah. You know, and I'm glad. He's a God who cannot lie. And if God said it, I believe it because God is true. Yeah. Stop by to tell somebody if you feel that yes. you're, not, you're not receiving the blessing that God has promised us, you might all take a look at yourself yeah. and see that if you're in the right position for the promise. First of all, you need to ask yourself, where am I right. in the Lord? Mm -hmm. You might appear to be doing the right things on the outside, mm -hmm. but your heart is not in the right position for God to bless you. Yeah. Yeah, if, 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 if we are not right in the position with Christ, even though we're attending church, working in ministries, singing on choir, standing in the pulpit, on the deacon ministry, that's because you're doing all that. All you, if you ain't been born again, all you're doing is making a spiritual deposit on a bankrupt soul. But whatever, but that's why every now and then we, we need to take inventory, look at our lives, that, that we might see the things that are keeping us from being blessed. And I want you to know that you can be blessed with things or without things. But you can't be blessed eternally without Jesus. You can survive, but you can't live. In fact, a while Jesus is coming back, and those surviving days will all be over. But for those of us who have been born again, a new life began. And what I like about this life is that it will never end. It will never end. in between the promise and the blessing. On his way to the promised land, the Bible said there was a famine in the land. And Abraham went down to Egypt to sojourn there because the famine was so bad. The Bible says that Sarah was a fair woman to look upon, which means 
means she was a good looking woman. Yeah. And, and, and fearing for his life, Abraham told her lie. Because at the time, he didn't know that if God made a promise, can no man stop him from being married. So he told Sarah, he said, when we get down to Egypt, those men is going to uh, ask you, are you my wife? And they will kill me and save you for the Pharaoh. When they ask you, who are you? Tell them that you're my sister. And it will be right with me. And my soul shall live because of thee. When the prince of the Pharaoh saw Satan, it was just like Abraham said. He saw a good looking woman. First thing he did was took her down to the Pharaoh's house. He treated Abraham well for service. But with God, some of play on Pharaoh and his house. And it was then that it was revealed to the Pharaoh that Sarah was Abraham's wife and not a sister. The Pharaoh called uh, Abraham in the question. He said, man, what is this thing that you've done? Why did you tell me that she was your wife instead of your sister? Uh, for I might have taken her to be my wife. Yeah. So he sent them away with all that they had. So Abraham lied. God knew his heart. And that he was in the wrong position at this time Come on. to receive the promise of the blessing. Yeah. But what I like about Abraham, he was a man of faith. Yeah. He kept on Make his way down to the promised land. Right. On the way down there, the Bible said there was a war between the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah. For a while, his nephew lived. They took all the goods from down to Sodom and Gomorrah. Come on, come on, and they took a while as a captive. Yeah. And they took him down as a prisoner. Yeah. Then there came one who was king. And come running and told Abraham yeah, yeah. everything that had happened down in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Abraham on his train service right. that was born in his house around 318 of them. Uh -huh. And they caught up with the kings down in a place called Dan. Right. That night they ambushed them and spoke them all the way back to a place called Hubba. On the left hand side of the master. Yeah. Abraham brought Lot back with all the women, all the goods, and all the people. But when he returned from the slaughter, he met a man by the name of Melchizedek. He was a king down in Satan, the priest of the Most High God. And he had some bread and wine in his hand. He said, Bless me, Abraham. Of the Most High God, uh -huh. for possessor of heaven and of earth, uh -huh. and He did bless be the Most High God, which delivered Him mm -hmm. out of the hand of His enemy. Yeah. But instead of Abraham going into a boasting mode, <laughs> Abraham said, "Well, all I have, Lord. I'm going to give it to Thee." Yeah. Yeah. And every morning, when y'all read on Sunday, Bob, give this tithe back to the Lord. It's a reason why you give your tent. Uh -huh. Abraham exemplified what Tithing was when he gave everything he had, a tenth of it, back to Melchizedek. Uh -huh. But the Bible said after they went down to the promised land, everybody felt good being in the promised land. But everybody, 